I'm Ann Ducey with Residential Conservation Services and welcome to Netline. We're out at the High Point Residential Neighborhood in West Seattle for the Green Living Expo. City Light joined with many other organizations to highlight sustainable building practices in these beautiful new homes. We'll have a tour a little bit later on in the program. We're also going to look at a sustainable vegetation control method which is being tried out at the North Substation using a herd of goats. And we'll have another paper cuts tip from the support desk gurus. This is one of a number of homes that is built by Saltaire that has achieved both a four star built green rating and an Energy Star certification. One of the first things you might notice is up on the roof you've got some solar panels. The solar panels are there to preheat the domestic hot water and to preheat the water that's used for the hydronic wall heating. Come on in, let's check it out. Hi, I'm here with Jim Schmidt, who is the project manager of Saltair Homes. And Jim, why don't you tell me a little bit about the efficient lighting that you've got here? Well, the exterior lights and all of the recessed cans in the home are uh, dedicated fluorescent fixtures and then the rest of the lights are standard incandescent with uh, fluorescent bulbs installed. So actually you took out the light bulbs, the regular incandescent light bulbs, and just screwed in regular compact? Yes, compact we did. Wow, that's and great. They give a very natural light and everybody likes it. Wow, this is only 13 watts. This gives the same light output as a regular 60 watt incandescent light bulb. We've also got some extremely uh, energy efficient windows. These windows are much more efficient than what the Washington State Energy Code requires. Uh, they get that high level of insulation by using vinyl frames, there's argon gas in between the frames, and there's a low E coating. The E for low E stands for emissivity, which means in the summertime, the heat is reflected back out, so you get less heat gain, and in the winter, the heat in the home is reflected back in, so you get less heat loss out. Also in the house is an Energy Star certified refrigerator, which uses less energy in one year than a 75 watt incandescent light bulb. So Jim, tell me more about uh, the floor. Well, the hardwood uh, on the first floor is all sustainable yield uh, hardwood. The carpeting throughout the home is made from recycled plastic and the floors in the uh, bathrooms upstairs and the utility room are marmoleum, which is linseed oil and a cork backing. Uh, they used to make that long before they made linoleum. So marmoleum, does it have oranges in it or something? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like you have on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> second floor. Oh, and I just wanted to mention that all the paint on the walls and the ceilings is zero VOC, which stands for volatile organic compounds, which means it doesn't give off any toxic fumes. Oh my goodness, Jim, you're going to have to walk me through this. This is way out of my element. Well, back over here, we have a tankless on-demand hot water heater. Uh, so when you turn on your tap or when you want heat, the water circulates through this, which has a burner, and as the water goes past it, a lot of little flames come on and heat the water to about 160 degrees. It then circulates to the heaters that we talked about to heat the home, or with a valve back here, adds cold water down to whatever you want at the tap, say 110 degrees. This pipe, yeah, water is stored in this tank, and this from the solar collector brings glycol in and the glycol is circulated around the holding tank for the water. And even on a day like today, the water, this glycol is coming in at 110 degrees and then it transfers water, transfers heat to the water before it goes into the heater or out to the domestic. This home was designed and built with a lot of the resource and sustainable items built into it. But anyone can make their home more efficient. One of the ways is with the resource efficient clothes washer. Uh, this front loader from GE, it uses about half the energy as a regular washing machine and uses only a quarter of the water. Uh, so Jim, Saltaire Homes has gone to 
a lot of trouble building in all the energy efficiency options and all the sustainable materials and, and such. And I'm wondering, do you think it's really worth it? Well, we believe that built green and energy efficiency is the way of the future. And it, it's good for us as part of the community, it's good for the community in general, and it's definitely good for the environment. Well, I can't agree with you more about that. Thank you so much for the tour. It's been really inspiring. You're welcome. It had been a long time since anyone had actually seen City Light's north substation northern boundary and fence. This rocky slope in the Maple Leaf neighborhood has been overgrown with an impenetrable thicket of blackberry bushes and other weeds and vines. No one was looking forward to the task of finding that fence until this truck showed up in late September. On board, a herd of 280 goats belonging to shepherd Greg Matson and his Healing Hooves Company. His goats were so eager to tackle the tangle of thorny brush, Matson had to drive the early diners along down the fence line so he could get the rest of the goats out of the trailer. Keep moving, Landscape supervisor Betsy Searing had decided the one acre area in the substation was too much to handle with conventional methods. This hillside is just so steep and so voluminous that to have a crew come in and tackle it uh, seemed like we'd have a likelihood of some injuries. The goats didn't mind the steep slopes. While most of us who have tried to cut back blackberries don't enjoy the job because of the thorns and brambles, Shepard Matson says this is exactly the kind of job his herd is good at. Oh yeah, they, they'll, they don't have a problem with the brambles. They'll work their way, kind of tuck their way in and slide underneath the brambles. They, when they're out, let them loose. They're, they're hungry and ready to go. <laughs> Matson says the herd consists mostly of females and their young kids, with a few neutered males. The goats will normally start with the bushes they like on the lowest area, so he has to place pallets and a wire mesh to give the hungry ruminants a way to get at the bushes higher on the hill. Betsy Searing says using goats is a way to be a little more friendly to the environment. City Light is trying so hard to be environmentally uh, conscious on our vegetation management. And not to say herbicides are the worst thing in the world, it's just the volume, the cost, would be really high for this project. Healing Who's four days on the site cost just over $2,500 plus the cost of the safety watch. The substation is a very high voltage danger area, and by law, a non-electrical worker without proper training must have a safety watch while in the substation. Cutting back the vegetation on the hillside is important because the plants are spilling over into neighbor's property. The blackberries also provide a seed source for plants to grow on the substation gravel floor. Plant control inside the substation is critical because plants can conduct electricity and endanger workers. Having a herd of goats in the middle of an urban neighborhood was pretty unusual and there were many curious and interested neighbors watching the goats progress in munching through the thicket. In fact, the neighbors met with Searing a month before the herd went to work and embraced the concept, even holding a block party the day the goats arrived. Whether City Light will use the herd in the future is up in the air. I don't think it's moving as quickly as I thought it would. This is, this is experimental, this is new, and so we're gonna give it a try. We'll probably have them come, up, come back again next spring and do some more. In the meantime, the goats did finish the main goal of this visit, finding the fence that has been hidden for so long. City Light crews now can get up the slope safely and be able to finish clearing the area closest to the adjacent property. Peter Clark reporting for Seattle City Light. Hi, I'm Arnie Brusklin from the Information Technology Service Desk and I want to show you a couple of easy ways to cut back on your paper usage. Many believe they have to make paper copies of important email because the system erases them from mailboxes after 45 days. But that isn't the case for email saved to archive. When you archive an item in GroupWise, it is permanently saved to your H drive on the network. Let me show you how to do this. To archive a message, first open the message and select the Actions menu, and then select Move to Archive. 
you'll notice that the message will disappear from the current folder. To go into your archive, go over to the left-hand side and find the word that says online. Click that and select archive from the pop-up menu. You'll notice that the online word will change to archive and that your title bar will also show the word archive. This indicates that you're no longer in the online mailbox. Locate the message that you previously archived and open it. You will notice that the reply and forward functions are grayed out, indicating that that function will not work. In order to reply or forward a previously archived message, you must first restore it to the online mailbox. To do this, just go to the Actions menu again and select Move to Archive again to deselect. You'll notice it'll disappear from the current folder. Now to find it back in your regular mailbox, you need to return to the online mailbox. Go back over to the left and select the word Archive one more time and select your name in the pop-up menu. Locate the message and open. You'll notice that Reply and Forward are now enabled. If the restored message is already older than 45 days, make sure you re-archive it before exiting GroupWise, otherwise the message will be deleted. An alternative to archiving is to save an email as a Word file. This can be done by following these steps. To save a message as a Word document, first open the message, then click the File menu and select Save As. Under Items to Save, select the item that you want to save out, then edit the file name if needed, and then enter the current directory where you want to save the document. You can use the Browse button to locate your network drive and your network folder. Then click the Save button, and then click Close. And finally, another simple way to cut back on paper use is to configure your printer for double-sided printing. To do this requires making a few changes to your computer setup, so call the service desk at 684-3766 and they will step you through what is needed. And you can call us for any questions you have on using your computer more efficiently. I'm Arnie Brusklund with your City Light Service Desk. Thanks for watching this edition of NetLine. If you have an idea about an interesting project going on at City Light, or want to know how a certain City Light job is performed, send an email to the address on the screen. I'm Ann Ducey.